it just has a World Rapid Championships in chess. Uh, and Magnus Carlsen won. How many of you know who Magnus Carlsen is? And most of you, I mean, he's been here, so you, know, you can probably see him on the wall somewhere in a picture. Uh, he's a world champion, and now he won the World Rapid Championship, but he had a lot of luck. And let's look at this game from the round before the last round, I think it was. I mean, I just, ch I, I just looked this up, so I don't really know. I think it was the next to last round. I think there was 15 rounds. In the last round, he had some, he just looked like he just needed a draw because he really just played for a draw, and he did it real efficiently. But uh, this, this game, he, he was white against Grishuk, who's a, one of the top Russian players, and he's a, a very good player. And unfortunately, and he got a winning position, but uh, Carlson somehow sneaked out, you know? He was very, very tricky, so I thought it would be kind of, well, I mean, it, okay. I, I didn't look at the games so long, but I looked at it a little bit. I didn't analyze it with a computer or anything, but we'll just see what happened. Okay, so Carlson was white. You can see, okay, Carlson was white and Grishuk was black. Um, so Grishuk chose uh, King's Indian, and I think he plays a Grunfeld usually. It, you got, tell me if I'm talking over people's heads or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so, oops. Uh, so, so bishop g7, and, and Carlson chose the Zamish variation, which is one of the most dangerous ways to play against the King's Indian. It's kind of, even Bobby Fisher re re regarded this as, he always played the King's Indian, almost, not always, but usually. That was his main opening against d4. And um, this, uh, he always, or not always, but he eventually regarded the, the Zamish as the most dangerous, uh, or the toughest system against, uh, against King's Indian. So what's the point of this move f3? Anyone got an idea? Yeah? To hold e4. Hmm? To hold e4. To hold e4, yeah. That's one of them. Okay, e4 wasn't threatened, but it now makes that pawn very solid. And, yeah? Prevent Yeah, it prevent. OK, that wasn't really a threat. But in some cases, if white brought the knight out to f3, in some cases, black could pin it. That's one thing. Basically, white's going, and the main thing is, okay, he wants to stop knight g4, so he's preparing bishop e3. He's going to make a setup where he goes bishop e3, queen to d2, maybe castles queen side, and uh, creates basically a very solid position. It has the same structure like the English attack. Uh, yeah, similar, similar to like a Yugoslav attack against a dragon or the English attack in an Eidorf, that type of thing. But also, white can use. He can castle queen side and push the h pawn up and try to checkmate like in the dragon, or white can uh, play quiet, more quiet way, which is more common, and, and just develop behind this solid pawn structure. And generally, when black plays c5, at some point white's going to push d5 and gain some space. Same thing if black plays e5 at some point. Usually, white pushes d5 and gains space. So he's trying to. So the, and and, it, and it's kind of unclear whether white's going to go for the crazy attack or the solid positional squeeze. You never know. You know, sometimes the same person could play it both ways, depending on how black uh, responds. But okay, here, Grishuk chose a system, which I've used several times. In fact, I had it like a couple weeks ago uh, as black. Okay, so, but actually, well, he did it with castling first, and then this, it didn't, in my game, it was, like, I didn't think you should castle right away. I thought you should, when you play this a6 and c6, you should leave the king in the center a little bit. At least that was what I thought, but I don't know, maybe Grishuk has different ideas, but it was, um, um, the idea, it's called the burn system, and the idea is to play b5. As you see, that e5 is well defended, d4, after c5 we can push white attacks on d4, white can deal with So we say, okay, I'm going to keep things back in the center, I'm just going to play b5 and put pressure and chip away from the side. This is named after, I don't remember, Robert or, or, or Donald Byrne, I don't remember which one, but uh, players from the 1960s, 1970s. And this is, uh, this is a pretty, uh, Decent system, and it avoids a lot of the sharp lines where they're very theoretical. And this one is, I kind of felt like you should leave the king in the center because maybe it's playable, to, but it's a little risky to, to castle first. Okay, so he, he castled bishop e3 and now a6. And uh, knight to e2, white played. And that was the same thing that I didn't think that white should put the knight there. I thought bishop d3 because black's not putting a lot of pressure on d4. So you, think you can get bishop d3 and then knight e2. But he chose to go knight e2, c6. So then there's this, this move, which is, anyone seen this before? Anyone know anything about this? This is the, one of the main ways of playing against the Zamish. And then rook b8 and b5 that way. 
and this adds a little pressure to d4. C6, it doesn't create a target of a knight on C6, and it also in some cases lets the queen out, doesn't, you know, it gives more way less chances to use this open C file in the future. But okay, so C6, uh, and what, let's suppose white just prevents B5. What does black do now, what do you think? This is a move that, well, it's not, I don't think it's particularly good, but it's a move that a lot of people might think about and say, okay, what, what black wants to play B5, we'll stop him. So well, what's the problem with this move? <laughs> yeah, it weakens B4. So what do you think black might do, though, to... Uh, yeah, C, C5, I, I'm not sure about C5, because um, first of all, okay, white can probably take that pawn. I, maybe not, I don't know, because black can often sacrifice a pawn like that. The so position will open up. But let's say white just goes D5. We've got the typical position, and A6 and A4, that helps white. I mean, it only, white's usually going to play A4 anyway if black plays A6 to stop B5. So this, th that's nothing special for black, and maybe white can take the pawn, I don't know. Or even after c5, white can leave the pawn on d4 and do something else, too, maybe. I don't know. I would play d5, probably. Okay, uh, so it's not c5, really, but what else could black do? Uh, queen b6. So you want to take b2. But uh, first of all, I think it might lose the queen. Like, if white just goes here, just let me check. Here, here, where does the queen go? can only go to b4, right? Nowhere else. Now we go back to a4. Okay, guarding c4 and attacking the queen again. Only place to go is to b2. And no draw. We don't agree to a draw here because we play, what do we play? Yeah? Bishop c1. Yeah, bishop c1. So black's hoping for that quick draw, but no. <laughs> okay, so, so that, no, queen b6, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, queen a5 is is a reasonable kind of it looks like, but is the queen going to be able to stay there? I, yeah, but okay, maybe I. Uh, so you want to play b5? I'm not sure that's even the greatest thing. But if white, but let's suppose I go rook a3 and now there's no b5, right? And and eventually I try to. I mean, the queen is stuck there because I want to play a5 and lock down on the b6 square. So yeah, you could do it, but it's not. It doesn't look like the best. I mean, the How about a5 and knight a6? Yeah, a5, of course. a5, and now the knight can go at a6. And we're not necessarily going to go right into b4, but then we're going to go e5 and somehow either take on d4 or make white play d5, and then we'll have the c5 square forever. So this kind of locking down on a weak, on a weak square and blocking the queen side, and now, uh, now white doesn't have any mobility over there. You know, like let's say white goes here, maybe go here, and then now, and now the knight can come to c5 and not, no, no b4 move ever. Or he can play at knight d4, knight d7, knight c5, also something. Of course you have to protect the pawn first, but I don't think that this is very good for white. So most people don't go a4. So okay, so he, he went c5 actually. And this, uh, this is the same position I got as I, I think it's the same position I got against Cheval. I mean, we've got to the same position in a for, few more moves. But okay, so c5. So white wants to lock down on b6 square. But uh, black goes b5. And white could take this pawn, of course, right? But actually, probably probably take with a knight. Because it's not running away, right? This develops the knight in the meantime, maybe aims at c4. But this is fine for black, I think, this structure, because they'll have the b file. And white's center looks good, but black can counterattack it, and there's nothing it's really doing. Black's pieces still have a lot of space. After knight takes there, bishop e6, all that stuff. So, um, so white took on d6, okay? And black takes back, and then knight f4. So he's letting out his bishop. And here, Grishuk played, I think that this was, I don't know, maybe his preparation or, or maybe or maybe he just found it over the board, but it's a rapid game, keep in mind. I think it's like 20 minutes per side or something, I don't know, with some sort of 10 second increment, maybe 15 minutes, I forgot. But it's 15? Okay. 
uh, 15 minutes, 10 second increment, that was a time control. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, so, so, uh, so this was a real interesting move. I played against Shabal of just uh, this move, planning to c5, and then here, he castled and I went c5. And, and now the point is, like, if white goes d5, I've got in this b5 move, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go here, here, that type of thing, you know. I got it. I, this getting in b5 is real important. So he, he took, I took back. Um, he went here, and then I went here. So, so he got his queen off the d file, and I have this queen side majority, but he has the d5 square. And basically the game kind of ended. There were some sharp variations, and then it was a draw. He went here to attack the pawn. I went there, traded everything, and then it got this move in, which is important. Because if I let him blockade c4 and consolidate and attack a6 and that type of thing, I could be in big trouble. But this was important. I get three pawns against two over there. So I got my majority. And he's got those two bishops. He can't take this pawn because, uh, because of knight to e5. And that's under a pin. And b3 uh, exposes this rook to the bishop on g7. So, you know, that. OK, so, so, he, uh, so he did this move, and then I did. This was crucial point, but okay. I'm not going to go so much into this game. But anyway, b3, knight e5, he went here. The, the, the por important point was that if he goes there, I go here to open c4, and then takes knight c4, right? Okay, he has to take it, because if he lets me take that bishop and pawn on c3, then it's going to be bad. And then he, he, he's, he has this move shutting out my bishop, but then there's interesting. Uh, I can take this pawn, and after this move, go here. And after that, just take back. And I've lost the exchange, but I'm about to go rook a2, and I have two passed pawns there. And then this rook on d5 is going to be stuck because mate on g2. And the pawns are going to start advancing. So that was real dangerous for white. I think there's something else I could do here, too. I mean, I don't have to take a4 right away. I can also play rook c8 or something. I'm not sure not rook c8, but well, whatever. OK, so he actually went uh, bishop d4, and I went here. Now, he has to get off the d-file. OK, uh, there was, uh, there was a, he decided to make a draw now, because he didn't see anything better. There was, uh, there was an f4 move, and uh, some crazy stuff uh, after, sorry, not, not f4, uh, um, queen c3. Oops. Queen c3, and then there was, and then some crazy stuff after knight d3 with black stands. Well, oh, white is a little bit worse, but okay. He decided to take here, and then uh, takes, 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 and it's a draw because uh, I take here, takes there, takes there, takes there, and now what do you think black should do? Down a pawn, right? So why would four four time U.S. champion agree to a draw with me? But th he saw what was going what was going to happen. So yeah, what would I do here? Rook c1, it's important. I mean, OK, if I don't play rook c1, it's going to be very hard to draw. But rook c1, it's totally drawn. Because there's no way white can make pass pawns on two. It's opposite colored bishops, right? There's no way white can make pass pawns on both sides of the board. I'm going to just go a5. I mean, of course, if he goes a5, I'll go bishop d2 and take the pawn. And so with a four against three, there's absolutely no chance with opposite colored bishops. Zero chance. I mean, you know, 1,200 should draw against the world champion. With that. Unless he psychs him out or something, but a5, uh, you know, and I, just like, you know, he can't make any pass pawn. You need to have two two pass pawns far enough apart, and there's no way for White to do it. So it's just no point in wasting time. So anyway, that was that was that game. But anyway, Grishuk played a very interesting move, rook e8. So um, the idea w what was shown in the game, Car uh, Carlson went bishop e2, and now came b4, chasing the knight. First, OK, whatever. Normally, white's not afraid of that, because knight is actually not so bad on a4 in most cases. And this pawn could be hanging out. But now comes that move. So the point is this pin on the e file. Now, white could have stopped that by queen to d2. But um, then black could play like I played. And you saw that Shabal went directly queen to c2. Not, uh, so I suppose black could just play that similar way. Maybe he had some other idea. I'm not sure. but. Um, but okay, so he went bishop e2 here, knight d5, 
and White's, White start, I think, uh, you know, starts getting in trouble pretty soon. I'm not sure exactly where, I didn't look at it that carefully, but so White can't take this knight, right, with a with pawn, because Black just takes here. And the bishop is, in these positions, when there's a fiend shadowed bishop like that, the bishop is so important. The dark squared bishop. You trade off the white one, and black's one has no opposite number. So that's, uh, you know, it's very tough for white. And you can tell, like, well, does it look like okay position to, for white here? I mean, I, I mean, uh, if I didn't say it, or, or you guys wouldn't wouldn't want the white side anyway. I mean, it looks complicated, but once you realize that white has no dark squared bishop, now moves like queen f6 are coming, hitting that knight and pawn on d4, queen a5. And, and then when this knight starts coming in too, queen h4 check in some cases, you know, so then real problems for white. Okay, so knight d5, also if white takes, black takes back and white's, we get a position where white center starts coming under, under a lot of pressure. Especially, he's not even castled yet, so I think white, you know. So anyway, so, so Carlson wins bishop c1, okay. Now knight to b6. And uh, w he decided to take that knight, which is, ends up black getting a lot of pressure. Uh, what if the bishop just went back? I mean, maybe black would just repeat positions, because draw with black is okay. I don't know if he has anything too super other than just repeating. But he can play other moves, of course. But, okay, so he went, white took, and then now d4 is under attack, so he had to go back to e3. But he keeps having problems with this bishop. So now black goes d5, and again, we wouldn't want to play this move if e5 were possible, but what does black do after e5? Yeah, bishop takes e5, and now it's, well, it's busted, right? So this hangs. So um, queen to d3 he played, guarding e4 and e3. And now d takes e4, f takes e4. And here, uh, you know, white still got that impressive pawn center, right? But this pawn center is just a weakness. It's not. I don't think white, white got a good position from the opening here. Now, we should continue with a5, and uh, bishop a6 is coming. So maybe white's not too standing terrible, but it's, it's very, I, I would say it's uncomfortable. I wouldn't like the position for white, at least, in, you know, anyway. Rook d1, he, he guarded uh, d4, because black's about to chase the queen away from that. Now queen c2, and black took, knight took back, because again, queen takes rook e4, so there's so much, white has to go to these contortions to hold his stuff alive. Now knight to d7. White has a slight moment, he, but black has to catch up in development. And white has a slight moment to, to do something. Well, okay, he has to castle, right? What can, he, what can he really do? And now knight f6, and now suddenly again pressure on the e pawn. Knight to g3, uh, not really anything else. I suppose the e5, uh, then knight to g4, that's going to be the same thing, I suppose. Um, so, uh, yeah. so, so, uh, so knight to g3, knight to g4, and now again, black's going to grab that bishop. White can't keep the bishop, so all this ended up, white kept his pawn alive in the center, kept his pawns alive in the center, but black's about to take the bishop, and then black, white's going to have troubles. Gonna, and his position is going to fall apart on the dark square. So bishop f2. Now you don't take the bishop, right? Because it's not running away. So that's an important principle. Your, your, your opponents, you want to trade their piece. But that piece is not going to run away. So you don't take it right away. You keep the tension. That's just almost always the best principle. Unless there's some specific thing that you, you know, so some specific reason. In principle, you should keep the tension. Because your opponent doesn't know, uh, you know, this bishop can't go away. It can't go to e1, of course, or anywhere else. So black doesn't take it right away, which would determine, of course, white, white also takes back with the queen, and now, and now f7 is under attack, and black has to spend a move defending that, and then it's not a, such a big advantage for black anymore. But uh, rook a to d8, threatening to take and then take on d4. So I think white had to play e5, and there's nothing else, I guess, right? No. Okay, e5, and now, now c5. So he undermined the position, he undermined the center. And white took on c5 and now just queen c7. So now suddenly white's proud center on e4 and d4, which he had from the beginning of the game, is now broken up. And this pawn on e5 is going to fall. And still white's in trouble on the dark square. So okay, he's still hanging on though. Rook to d8, rook to d8, knight e4. Okay, I don't know, we'll go through 
can look more closely to find out where exactly white made the mistake. Maybe it was just the opening, I don't know. But bishop takes e5, threatening, uh, G, threatening h2, so white has to go g3. And now finally black took the bishop. Uh, of course, if, if white tried bishop g3, then there's knight e3. So, okay. So now he finally took the bishop. And here white's got a problem that uh, if, uh, if, uh, that's, uh, if the knight takes, then, uh, then, uh, then bishop d4, I suppose. And yeah, probably bishop d4. And white's in trouble there, so if rook takes bishop d4, definitely, and queen takes is not possible either, same thing. So king takes, he, now queen c6, and rook e1. White's, you know, really, this bishop is stronger than the knight. And here I think, I suppose that, I mean, I mean, black's position is really promising, and it almost looks like he's just winning. And Grishuk went bishop d4 check, and after king f1, f5, now knight f2. So slight difference in move order. Couldn't black play f5 right away? And now white loses the option, because bishop d4 check we can always do, right? So let's first find out where the knight's going to go. And now, for instance, if the knight goes to g5, or if white goes queen c4, knight g5, uh, bishop to d4 check, and white's getting checkmated. Uh, or at least losing a lot. No, I think it's just forced checkmate. Well, OK, bishop e3. But in any case, a king here, go down here, ch you know, go check here, and then next king has to come to one of these squares, and then bishop takes b2. So that's, and that's over. Same with king d3. And so, so f5, what is white? And it has to go knight to d2. And I'm not sure. Now, now black could go and take the pawn on c5. Oh, sorry, he can't go knight to d2. I mean, he has to go knight to d2 right away, probably. But then minimum black can go and take the pawn on bishop d4 and take on c5. And but maybe have even better check here and some some sort of I don't know yeah I didn't look uh, too closely at this and not try to figure it out right now but in any case f5 looked right away it looked a better chance better now now black took the pawn but here white's a little bit more coordinated rook rook here and check check king ran away bishop d4. I guess if bishop b6, then now white's you know getting some some play like this, and also the rook can go to b5. So he got a, so he got a good idea. He 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 let white take the, the pawn on a5, but now uh, now he made a serious mistake. I would say queen b6. This let white check on c4 and then get the rook to b5, which is a huge difference. If you just if you, if black just plays king h8. I think white's white. I mean, was white was really busted after f5, I suppose. But I think white's pretty busted here too. Even though black's not up a pawn, first of all, the white king's in more danger. The ki black king is totally safe on this diagonal, guarded by that bishop, and the knight is much worse. And the rook, what kind of rook is 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 almost trapped. I mean, that was the big difference. And somehow the game turned after after queen b6. Although black was still okay. But slowly he got outplayed, like knight d3. Now white got his pieces into the center, and he sort of occupied the light squares in the center. And the pawn, and now black, you know, he kind of lashed out a little bit, and rook there, okay. Now, was, now white's pretty much out of, out of the woods, minimum. And white's actually, I'm sure Carlson is now ready to play for a win already. So before he was just busted. And now suddenly queen is occupying an incredible square in the middle of the board. The knight is. Also, getting black has to constantly watch that this knight doesn't jump in. Pawn on b4 is weak. Black's just struggling to draw, I'd say. I mean, maybe he can do it. Probably he can do it, but he needs to be accurate. And considering that Grishuk definitely had a much better, or you could say, winning position earlier, that king there, white well, took this pawn, and now acts outside past pawn, f4. So he needs to get some play, you know, but king, king g2. So he, he, uh, He's, White's king is now totally safe, guarded by the queen, the same way Black's king would have been with a bishop if he had played king h8 or something like that. So king g2, Black went here, and knight came back. Now he took, he can't push to f3, of course. White's guarding that. Queen there, knight f2. Now the knight's going to move to even better square on e4. 
Black's just trying to trade queens, okay? Black is definitely going to not lose if he trades queens because he'll stop the pawn with a bishop. A bishop is better than a knight, and, and he'll take white's pawn on g3 somehow. Okay, so queen there, bishop there, queen check, king up there, there, some more moves. Queen b7, I don't know what black was going to do, but king h, uh, king, uh, I don't know, I mean, why, white's not playing for, a, I'm sorry, yeah, I mean, queen, sorry, I'm confusing myself. Of course, uh, Carlson playing for a win now, knight e4, uh, and now h5, so he's, he wants to try to trade off white's pawn. If he trades off the g3 pawn, it's okay, but a5, and now I, I h4 he played, and white gets a connect, uh, protect, or black gets a protected pass pawn, but it's, uh, there's no way through this position somehow for, for, uh, for black. There's no way to use that pawn. The queen and bishop just don't work together the same way a queen and knight do. You've heard about this saying, right? Queen and knight work together well, and this is a pretty good example. I mean, this, the queen and bishop are just don't coordinate so well, and the, the knight's covering all the squ squares, and if black tries to go too far away to do something, then, then white's going to quickly attack him with the queen and knight, you know, his king, that is. So, so instead, I suppose that g4, with a plan of eventually playing h4 somehow, I suppose this is a much better chance. I don't know. Okay, so h4, g4, bishop e3, now he checked, and here the fatal mistake, I, I, I suppose. Black allowed the queens to be traded, and here, when the queens are traded with the pawn on g4, it's, it's now white's going to win the bishop and keep his last pawn on g4 and win the game. If, if, uh, if, if it was still h5 and g3, black would be able to, you know, play g4, advance the king, and then eventually h4, right? And in the minor piece ending, that is. While white's knight is heading over to the queen side to win the black bishop, black will just trade off the g3 pawn and it'll be a draw. So, but, but in this position, I don't know, probably low on time, he, he, uh, he allowed the queen trade, and he should have on king h8, but I mean, white's much better here still. I mean, he probably, I'm not sure exactly what, you know, he probably gives some checks and push the a pawn, something like that, I don't know, but, or whatever. But uh, so he so he went king g6 and white checked on d6. And now the game ended quickly. Okay, pawn pushed. Black went here, knight there. About to win the bishop, pretty easy. Important to get the king up here and not allow king f4. And um, black went there and then traded and that's it. Black resigned because I mean h3 is not going anywhere and then get back to guard the g-pawn and then bring the knight over. So, so I think that this was a pretty interesting game. Uh, it shows like this system against the King's Indian, I mean in the King's Indian against the Zamish. And, but then it shows also, you know, good player, I mean it was, looked like a winning position for black, I thought, I don't know. But in, especially in rapid, you can mix things up and, okay, so that, that was that game. Now, let me sh show you some, that I don't know what the, since the average is about 1500 maybe, I shouldn't have, I thought it was going to be different, but uh, I, I'll show you now some, some, some etudes. Okay, this way, okay, so you guys aren't going to see the solution why each time we put a move in. <laughs> I don't have to, I didn't know it was going to do that. Was, but okay, so bishop g7, okay. Uh, but now black can take this pawn and check, you know? And so this is uh, this a draw. You know, so that's that's not it, but that's a start. So what else could we? Huh? Oh, bishop f6. Okay, so let's let's try this one. Okay, so black's gonna definitely take the pawn, right? Now what? Rook g7, okay, looks scary, right? I mean, rook h8, king f7 doesn't do anything, right? Rook g6, or g7, okay, take. King h8, only move. Rook f7, okay, only move, is back. Yeah, so that doesn't achieve anything, right? You can take the pawn on g6, but 
king king goes up and now white's going now it's going to be king and rook against king and rook and chances of winning are probably pretty low right so okay so bishop f6 doesn't quite do it i don't see any other you know I mean, you can take whatever you can take g6 immediately you can withdraw so what else any other ideas yeah Ah, very good. Okay. So, th but going back, uh, so first of all, we got the idea of G7, right? I mean, we hadn't got, he found it right away, but uh, G7, uh, now, uh, the idea is, okay, black can't take the rook, right? Because white queens makes, wins the game, okay? The, but the black go rook goes away, and then white rook has to go somewhere. It doesn't matter where. The black has a fortress. This bishop is, is here, and... It's an extra piece, but it's pretty useless stuck uh, buried on H8. And there's nothing white can do. I mean, uh, he, c he can't get uh, his king anywhere. Black just starts checking and chases it back. I mean, there's just no way through, you know? But if you realize that if you take this bishop off the board, then you have rook H8. And then you realize, like, this position is winning without that bishop. So, so, then, so then, then you have... Like he said, you check, take the bishop, check, come back, and then g7. Okay. And now, black, rook is under attack, and of course if they take the rook, white makes a queen, and it takes the rook and makes a queen. And if this rook goes anywhere, then rook h8, and skewers the king and the rook. You know, and then white wins. So that was, that was interesting. Okay, next one. Okay, so this is, this is white to move. Yeah, yeah? I've solved it. You, have you seen it before, or did you solve it already? I just solved it. I've never seen it. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's the move? Uh, bishop f4. Bishop f4, okay. Uh, okay, well, let's just, we'll go with that. Bishop f4, and now uh, black is in Zugzwang, right? So what, what does black do? What can he do? Well, he takes its queening, so he probably oh. has to play knight f8. Okay, knight f8, and then was Bishop d6. Bishop d6, and then knight goes, let's say, to e6. Okay, let's suppose you promote and now he takes it. You know, game's over? Well, that's just game's over, it's a draw. Well, you win it against me, let's see. That's a, that's a fortress. I mean, you don't need these pawns, of course. And it doesn't matter that you have them either. There's, you can't approach without stalemating them, right? So this is important, that's the first thing of this lesson, because you can actually get, I mean, this, this is crazy, this, this problem. I mean, this is going to blow your mind, but you're not going to get the, any position like this or ever have any kind of theme like this ever happen in a game, I, I promise you. But you can get this fortress. So uh, that's, uh, you know, so that's important to know. It's important knowledge. Or it's also without these pawns, it's a fortress. With this, you know, let, let's suppose white goes, okay, oops. Oh, it's black's move, sorry. Okay, it's black's move. We'll start throwing away the pawns. We don't care. You know, throw away some pawns. If white doesn't take them, it doesn't make a difference because he's, you know, and now, now he goes there and here. Oops. And white just never going to get through because, uh, you know, if there was another file over here, then black, black could, black could uh, run away. But here it's stalemate. So there's no way to get him out of the corner. So that's that's uh, that's the so it's not actually that's not the solution, but we're on we're we're starting to learn some stuff. It's a weird position, and when you, we're sp it's going to take a while to figure out what exactly is going on. So bishop f4 is a good start. Well, what about bishop h6? That's another. I mean, if you wanted to just queen the pawn, bishop h6 would be the most direct way, right? It's also a draw, though. Right? What, you got an idea? Uh huh. Bishop f4. Bishop f4. Okay. Knight f8. Okay. Bishop d6. Right. And king F2. King F2, okay. Now, black is in Zugzwang, right? Well, it will be, at least. G F4, uh, King F3, F5, King F2. Start F3, you're going to have to throw the pawns away, right? Yeah. So that's, that, that would win, right? However, uh, black has a special move here. Any, any ideas what black could do? And by the way, let's just go like bishop h6. Bishop, oops, sorry, bishop h6, 
doesn't achieve anything because king b8. And white's start, or black's going to start bringing the king over to take the pawn. Okay, and obviously if white doesn't get, if white loses this pawn, it's a draw. We know that. And if, if he comes here and white queens, and then goes here, tries to go back, and white cuts him off, that's still a draw. This is a fortress also. So, uh, you know, black's just going to stay over here on c7 and uh, or d, d6 and c8. And uh, if white tries to come closer, it's going to be a stalemate. You know, you can't get through. And okay, let's even imagine black had some pawns there. He'd just start pushing them now until white has to capture them. And so that's, so that even when the king's outside of the corner, it's also a draw. So bishop f4 is definitely the only way. But do you see a move for black? Yeah. Um, knight d8. Knight d8, yeah. Crazy move, okay. So what can white do here? What happens if we queen? Yeah, stalemate, right? What happens if we rook? Stalemate. And if we bishop? Yeah, we can take off all of black's pieces here, the knight and the two pawns. And we can even give white about 10 more bishops on that dark square, of course. Not on the light squares. We just need one light squared bishop, and white will win. But have maybe, maybe 10, 15, however many we can fit on the board, and it's still a draw. So bishoping definitely doesn't help. So we have to knight, because otherwise black takes the pawn, and then, then it's definitely at least a draw for black. So, so white has to make a knight. Now suddenly black realizes uh, something real, really weird about the position. What do you think that is? <laughs> huh? What's that? He has more access to that. Yeah, we have a knight. Of course, now, let's say these are traded. There's the bishop and knight are off the board. White wins. There's no fortress when there's a knight. Because the knight will come in and, you know, yeah, check him and, and also can sacrifice on c6. That's the main thing White would do. Just take, bring the king up and sacrifice on c6 and win that way. So, no, there's no fortress if White keeps the knight. But what does, uh, what does black realize suddenly? Yeah? Yeah, he realizes he doesn't want to have his own knight. He wishes his knight were gone, you know, because that would be stalemate. So now he's going to start a little chase. If he doesn't do it, white's just going to win, because as long as white keeps the knight, it's a win. But he's going to start a little chase where his knight tries to get captured, and white's knight tries to avoid capturing it. <laughs> yeah, we can't, we can't take the knight because that's stalemate. And if white goes to d7, then black can take, uh, well, sorry, black can just take on f4. And, and that's, you know, definitely black's the one playing for a win, you know, because he has two extra pawns. Okay, it's probably a draw, but whatever. Uh, so knight h7 also. So he has, to guard his, he has to guard the bishop, right? And black, he can't take on f4 because then, then he, it's not stalemate and white's going to win when he has a knight. He'll bring the king up, capture the pawn, sacrifice the knight on c6. So, um, so black says, okay, I mean, and if, same thing if he takes here, it's going to take a little bit of technique to win, but white's eventually going to win here. Because um, there's no stalemate. White's going to bring the, I think it start with bringing the king up. And you know, you may even have to play knight and bishop against king. But you know, it's, it's a win, though. So, um, so, so black, what does black do now? What do you think? Yeah, he's going to keep chasing the knight. And again, white can't take the knight, so what does white do? Any ideas? Knight h4. Knight h4, yeah, because if we go somewhere else like this, then black can actually fork, um, yeah, black can actually fork the, the two pieces and force white to capture the knight and draw. So it has to go to h4. And what does black do? Knight g6. Knight g6. Again, if he tries doing something like that, okay, no problem. Because as long as this knight stays alive, white's going to win the game. Uh, so he goes knight g6, and again, white can't capture the knight, so what does white do? Knight g2. Okay, and now you probably guess what black does now, right? Knight h4. And now, if knight e1, what does black do? Knight f3 check. And that would force the draw, because if white takes, it's stalemate. And if he trades, that's what's well, also stalemate. But anyway, it's fortress. So, 
so he, what does black do after night, night there? He's still trying to lose this knight, isn't he? Huh? Oh, sorry. I mean, if white goes, sorry, white goes here, though, instead, right? So what does black do now? Knight g2. Knight g2. And now it looks like, OK, the, the bishop's under attack and the knight's under attack. It looks like black has won the battle, and now he's going to force white to capture the knight. But what does white do instead? Any ideas? Knight d5, yeah. And that protects the bishop. And black can't keep chasing it, because if it goes here, then this takes, right? And this is no fortress. It right? has two pawns, so he'll win. Uh, and if black captures the knight, then now it's not stalemate, because he has that move. So now white's going to win. He's just going to you know, bring the king over and capture the pawn, for instance, and then come back and take those pawns and eventually bring the king up and then play c6. Like, let's say, just to show you, bishop takes, okay, he goes, say black goes there, you know, whatever, okay. Something like that. Eventually black's going to be forced back and, and then, you know, c6 and, and then b7 and b8. Or if, I, if he doesn't, then, then white will of course, take on B7. So I hope you enjoyed that position. Mm -hmm.